the safe distance. Nowadays this line is very much popular because of Corona. But you have already heard this line in a railway platform. Whenever a fast moving train is coming, they say to stay away. That is because this may cause accident. So a fast moving train can push you inside the railway track although you are not willing to go there. This can be explained with the help of Bernoulli's principle. So let us try to understand this with lots of lots of activities and example and their explanation with me as well as Provincer. So let us start. For a specific type of fluid there are three different form of energy. Number one is kinetic energy. Number two is potential energy and number three is pressure energy. For a specific type of fluid this total summation of the energy per unit volume is a conserved one. We all know that total energy of a system is constant. So for a fluid which is flowing in a specific direction its total energy that is the potential kinetic and pressure energy is constant. And do you know from the conservation of energy we can mathematically derive this Bernoulli's equation. But for now we are not going to do some tedious mathematical derivation from the conservation of energy to Bernoulli's equation. But we are going to do some wonderful experiment. So over to Praveen sir. Hi everybody. Myself Praveen Tiwari. That's now my friend Devoshri Niyogi. You have a wonderful explanation. In fact the theoretical concept of Bernoulli's principle. Well friends, I will go for the physical aspect of it. I will try to explain to you uh, its application in day to day activities. In fact, uh, in every nook and corner that you look around us, you see the application of the theory. Uh, I will be, be putting it to you, okay, this principle, in a more easier manner. Say, consider a flowing fluid, a bit uh, liquid or a gas. And if we consider certain regions within the flowing fluid, and if in a particular region, if you see the velocity of the moving particles very high, then the pressure of the fluid will be very less. In fact, pressure of the gas or fluid at any point is inversely proportional to the velocity of the moving particles of the fluid. I make clear if pressure increases velocity decreases and vice versa. So here goes the practical applications. First and foremost this comes to your mind and you all of us are quite accustomed to Say if you have if you see a moving bus, there is a dust particles also moving behind it. Why? Right. When the bus moves forward, it takes also the air particles with us. So behind the bus, the velocity of the air particles is very high. As Naja told you, the pressure of the air behind the bus decreases. So in the adjoining areas of the okay, okay, uh, the bus, what happens? Then the, the, the pressure is high. And the atmospheric pressure is quite high, then the pressure behind the bus. As you know, fluids or gases flow from high pressure to low pressure. So dust particles from the adjoining area rushes to the back and it starts following the bus. When an express train passes with the full speed near a platform, the chances that you will be sucked into the track. The reason is very simple, as I, as, 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 as I told you for the, the example of the bus. You see, whenever two ships are moving in full speed in a water body, be it the sea or the ocean, they are told not to come close to each other. If they do so, and they are moving with a high velocity, they every chance they will collide. Why? If they are moving with a high velocity, both of them, 
air in between also has a higher velocity. So pressure in the middle is very less. So adjoining areas we have atrium pressure higher than the pressure in the middle. So air crushes in the middle. And then the all chances that you bring the two ships together and the chance of collision. Few days ago we had that severe cyclone on farm and you heard of stories where rooftop tops blew off of poor people. It was miserable. But then culprit was the Bernalis principle. Okay, uh, I mean when the air was when I mean, the wind was flowing with a huge velocity above the rooftops, pressure above the rooftops decreased. Air pressure I mean. So inside the air is in the room, pressure was quite normal, but high to the pressure outside. So air blew out with the rooftop. Then we have okay, uh, your aeroplanes are so designed. Okay, say the upper part is streamlined. Okay, just like this. Why? The same thing, same reasons. Okay, just to abide by the okay, but not this. If this is okay, the streamlined velocity of air will be higher, so pressure will be less. Pressure below more, so it gets a lift up when this okay, tries to go up. Okay, starts off on the thing. Okay, then uh, okay, we have you know you have you have a kind of a uh, spin balling. You have heard of a spin balling when you try to spin a ball, okay, and then after going for a particular flight, suddenly the ball drops down. It's called a Magnus effect, and also this can be explained by the Bernoulli's. Then we, nowadays we okay in days of Corona, we are using okay, uh, your uh, okay, spray okay, just to okay, disinfect your okay, your hands. Spray used, spray gun in fact, just based on okay, okay, the here. Then we have the Bunsen burner, working a Bunsen burner flame, same, is based on the this Now I'll show you some, some, uh, experiments. Now I'll show you some tactical experiments which you can do with day to day things that is available in and around us pertaining to obviously what all is to uh, I have taken a book respectively and then I have taken here a, a paper some three sports and I'll 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 let them both fall I put the paper on this book and I let both of them fall freely under gravity. Any guesses what will happen? Yes, this will fly off and then it will come down. Let's see what happens. Ready? One, two, three. What happens? Surprise! Both of them fall together. Why is so? Answer lies in the monosphere. It is falling. Velocity of air above the paper is very high because the book is falling in the, in the higher velocity as it moves down. So pressure above air pressure, in fact, above the paper. Is adjoining areas, the atmospheric pressure, more than the pressure here. So, here rushes it from outside and does not allow the paper to fly. Now, second experiment I have taken two very light pieces of plastic paper and okay, keeping it parallel. Now, if I blow air okay, forward, what happens if I blow air in front? What happened? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Can you see both the papers coming together? Velocity of air is very high. Pressure low. So they come together. The pressure in the adjoining area is very high. 
Next experiment is with this only single paper only. Look here, if I blow air straight, any guesses what will happen? Want to see? Have a look. When I'm blowing air straight, the paper also becomes straight. How is possible? But now this theorem. Okay. Velocity again very high, pressure decreased, pressure is higher, so this one goes up. I have taken two colorful balloons, both are held parallelly. Now I blow air in the middle, see what happens. Same as the paper experiment which I have shown you. Once more. Okay. Why? Same reason. But now this theorem. Now I am in my kitchen. Okay. Not to cook any food. But to show an experiment on one of this theorem. There is okay, a plastic ping pong ball. And then it uh, in a pendulum. Okay. And then I'll try to oscillate it. Okay near a tap. It's having its normal oscillation. Can you see it? But moment I switch, I on the tap, see what happens. You can see the ping pong ball staying at a particular place, not oscillating. And if I switch off the tap, Again, it starts to oscillate. You know why? Again, this is due to Bernoulli's theorem. The velocity of the water is very high there. The pressure is low. Adjoining areas, pressure high. So the so ping pong ball rushes there and then becomes stationary there. Again, please. Okay, and I finish it off it on the tap. Again, starts to see it. Thank you. That's all for my side. Bye bye. So, as you can see, there are lots of lots of application of Bernoulli's principle in our day to day life. That is the beauty of physics. We can get so many interesting things in our surroundings and we can apply the concept of physics to explain it so that is the most beautiful thing of physics but the condition is you have to be able to ask a question why and then how if you are able to ask this question to yourself how and why physics is going to be the most interesting subject for you you have to be curious about knowing things, how it is working, how it is happening. Then you are going to fall in love with this subject. So that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this session. And last but not the least, stay curious. Thank you. Bye-bye.